But uh, just to get a feel, like how, how many people are brand new to WordPress? You're like, what is this whole WordPress majigger? Okay, cool. And how many people are a little bit more advanced? Okay, so this is this is uh, a more basic session of how to basically set up and, and uh, get a theme installed on your site and stuff like that. So um, feel free if it is a little bit too basic. Uh, shout out questions. Or, uh, I mean, if you want to leave and go into another session, you won't hurt my feelings. So. Cool. So, basically, uh, I'm David Wells. Uh, I work at a company here in uh, Boston called HubSpot. Um, anybody familiar with HubSpot? Yeah, all right. Um, and I also run my own company called Socializer Cause, uh, where I do a bunch of uh, WordPress development for nonprofits. But uh, I've basically been working with WordPress for about four years now. So I'm pretty familiar with the system, and um, I walk people through kind of how to set up uh, WordPress on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's kind of what this session is all about. But um, yeah, I mean, basically, making the choice of WordPress is absolutely the way to go. Uh, static website, I mean, it's way too hard to update, keep, uh, and manage, and kind of grow, and it gets unwieldy. Um, and there's other content management systems out there. But a self-hosted WordPress site is, is definitely the way to go uh, in terms of like owning your own domain, owning the content, not having it on someone else's site, and not using um, WordPress.com. So like, you know, whatever your site, .wordpress.com, that's actually really bad in terms of search engine optimization. So you always want to own all of your content under your own domain. So congratulations, everybody. You did it. Um, but basically, there's six steps to... Um, you know, website happiness um, and setting up WordPress, getting it up and running um, in, in just about two hours. It might take a little bit longer your first time, but once you do it once, it's kind of uh, pretty easy from there. But basically, um, you, you, you need to set up hosting, um, you need to install it, which a lot of hosting providers actually have one-click installs, and that's kind of what I'm going to walk through today. You can do manual installs. It's a little bit more advanced. You have to set up your own database, stuff like that. Um, and if anybody has questions about that, come find me later today and I can show you how to do that. Um, then there's some initial things you want to do when you actually get the uh, WordPress install set up. Um, and then basically the cool thing about WordPress is that you're not limited to the design. Once you set it up, um, WordPress works off of themes. So you can basically change your entire site design um, with a click of a button, uh, basically, and kind of choose, and, there, and there's thousands and thousands, probably millions out there of professional themes out there already made. So the days of paying, you know, $20,000 for a professionally designed website are long gone. And I'm going to show you how to basically get a awesome looking website uh, for either free or like around like 30 bucks. So does that sound good? Yeah. <laughs> tough crowd, tough crowd. All right. So uh, let's jump into it. Um, so hosting. So when you're when you're looking for hosting, there's a, there's a couple. Uh, I mean, there's there's thousands of hosting companies out there. These would be the uh, four that I recommend. I actually use Bluehost, Bluehost, Hostgator, and GoDaddy um, are pretty much uh, easy one-click installs, and they're the hosting is around like six bucks a month or something, really cheap. Um, and you basically can set up. I believe it's like 100 different instances of WordPress on Bluehost and these other sites. So it's like you could have 100 hosts, 100 sites on your $6 a month uh, kind of plan there. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit more robust and your, your site gets a ton, a ton of traffic and you basically uh, beat the internet, um, you're going to want to go with a more robust solution. And that would be uh, Rackspace or actually setting up your own uh, server on Amazon Web Services or something like that. It's a little bit more expensive, and it's a little bit harder to set up um, in those in those uh, for providers. But yeah, so um, without further ado, uh, you guys want to see like the walkthrough of how to actually set up a site. We'll set up a WordPress site in like four minutes. Cool. All right. So um, let me go to Bluehost. Yeah, I use Bluehost, um, HostGator, and GoDaddy are basically the same thing. But uh, and if you have a domain, um, you, you're going to need to basically map it over to Bluehost. But if you don't, 
It's actually when you sign up with Bluehost, you get a free domain with the purchase of hosting or whatever. So it's pretty easy to set up there. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and log in and show you guys. So there's basically, and, and this is what HostGator um, and Bluehost look like. Uh, GoDaddy is a little bit different. They have a UI and they change it pretty much every day. Um, very, very frustrating. Uh, but they have awesome commercials, right? Um, but uh, basically, um, yeah. So, and and with all these these instructions, I mean, if you go onto YouTube and search for, you know, how to set up WordPress on, you know, Bluehost or whatever, like it's going to walk you. There's tons of tutorials out there. That's actually how I, I'm I'm self-taught with WordPress through tutorial videos on the internet. There's tons of resources out there. Um, and the cool thing about WordPress, there's I don't know. I have no idea how many developers there are. There's tons. There's probably like 20,000 WordPress developers out there. Anything that you can think of, you, what you want your site to do, there's probably a code snippet that does it or a plugin that does it for you. So that's also a cool thing. Anyways, um, basically to install uh, WordPress with Bluehost or, Ho uh, or HostGator, um, there's a, a uh, in your cPanel, there's a thing called Simple Scripts. Basically, open that up. And there's, there's actually one-click installs for a lot of different things. So if you're trying to run a forum or something else uh, like that, there's actually a ton of different, um, and here's all my sites I've set up. So you can see, you can definitely have more than one uh, on here. But these are all the different um, services you can use. There are other CMSs on here. Um, you probably don't want to use those because, again, WordPress is the best. Um, but basically, you would just select WordPress, um, and then, it would, yeah. Down here, click install. And choose the domain that you want to set it up uh, on. So I'm going to choose, I'm just going to set up a new uh, WordPress install on a testing in a subdirectory of my main site there. Oops. And then basically, I've read the terms and conditions complete. So now it is setting up everything for me, configuring everything, um, as you can see here. And in a couple of seconds here, I must pull this. Yes, question. If, when you set, Right, so that's for WordPress.com where you can map your domain on top of it, but then WordPress still owns all of your, like basically it's all on WordPress and there's a lot of limitations with the Word, like when you map a domain on top of WordPress.com. This is a, this is a self-hosted on your own server or blue, or, or this is basically your own server where you can do a lot of other things, install other plugins that WordPress.com will not allow you to do. A good question. And yeah, if anybody has something, shout them out or whatever. And we'll do it. But basically, we have the WordPress installed here. Gives you the username and password. And we'll just go ahead and log in. So have you guys uh, seen the back end of WordPress yet? Or you guys, some of you totally new to it? Totally new? All right. So all right, let's log in and take a look. Very, very easy to set up pages and blog posts in a WordPress site. If you can write a Word document, you can use WordPress. Um, so yeah, so here we are in the new install of WordPress here. Um, basically, uh, you can create posts under posts. Uh, you can create pages under pages. Very, very, very easy to use. Um, but uh, I'm going to show you some stuff that you definitely want to do when you set up your new install. So every new WordPress install, I do this right off the bat. Um, one of the things that is by default, um, when you when you have a page on here, I'll show you here. When you have a page in WordPress or a post on WordPress, by default, it actually sets up the URL structure to look like this. So basically, uh, and this is the site dgwells.com/testing, and then question mark page ID equals. Um, this is a very uh, SEO unfriendly URL structure. So you definitely want to go into your settings of WordPress. And um, where it is uh, says permalinks, you basically want to um, 
And I'm going to share these slides later and you know link up some tutorial videos and what have you. But basically, you want to use a custom structure, and that custom structure is uh, slash uh, percent sign post name percent sign slash. And what that does is set up the pages to look like that. So the, the, the name of this particular page is called sample page in the back end, but now Google can actually see this URL and it's not a, a basically a question mark, which is a variable and they can't read that, yeah? So you're not doomed. Um, you can do, if, if you, Oh, so the oh, so the question was, uh, are you doomed if your site has already been set up like this with the question mark equals whatever? Um, so you're not doomed. You you can actually do 301 redirects of all those old URLs. It is a little bit of work, um, and yeah, but I would definitely do that because when there's too many URL variables, Google doesn't really know what the URL is. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, but when you change that though, so there is a plugin called Redirection that will basically, if you do make that switch, it can help with that. And sometimes it'll do it automatically for anything that you change. So you have to look into that question. Yeah, sure. So basically, and, and there, the, the, this is like written up. So the permalink settings, all everything is really, really, really well documented on WordPress.org in the codex. And it'll basically show you all the different options here. This is the one that I use. Uh, you can use the date as well, uh, but you definitely want to make sure that that is set up. So, so the date, I'm not sure what the actual uh, syntax is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so that's what it would look like, like, ne like year, month, um, day, et cetera. But yeah. I just use the post name. Um, that is actually... I would recommend doing that. Um, John here will will argue all day on it. But if if there's a question, can you see the microphone? So, why do you have a custom structure? Well, because if if you have like the way it's set up here with the like question mark p equals whatever the that's just like the ID of the post in the database. But what? So are you on WordPress.com or self-hosted WordPress? Okay. So yeah, that's not self-hosted. Um, I have a microphone. So okay. I have a microphone. If someone would like to ask a question, raise your hand and I'll bring the microphone to you so everyone yeah. can hear it. So yeah. Okay, cool. And I'll try to repeat them. Sorry about that. All right. So uh, raise your hand if you want to say something, and I'll bring the microphone to you. Here. Uh, we'll we'll do we'll do a bunch of questions at the end as well. So, uh, but basically the next step um, that you want to do is basically install a, a plugin called XML Sitemaps, and that's going to build out a sitemap for your WordPress install. Um, and then you want to submit that to Google Webmaster Tools, and that's basically going to tell Google every time that you create a new page or post on your site, it's going to ping Google tell. Tell them, hey, I have a new page on my site. Come and index it. Show me in search results, please, and thank you. Um, and then you also want to install, uh, you know, Google Analytics just to get some stats back. And you know, you don't really want to have a site that does not have stats coming in. Otherwise, you're kind of blind. You don't really know what's happening. You don't know if your marketing is working or not. Um, and that would be in the footer.php or there's plugins out there. If you just uh, Google WordPress Google Analytics plugin. Can install it that way. Yeah, I guess. These the question was: Are these slides online? They will be later today. Right. So the plugins. I'll show you guys how to install plugins real quick here. So in the in your in your sidebar here where it's plugins, you would just come in here and we'll actually do it right now. So you just click on Add New Plugin, and there's a there's a handy search box here. So I'm just going to search for XML sitemaps. 
and basically it's really really easy to install plugins now it used to be a little bit harder so here is the plugin that I'm referencing you just click install now I do want to install the plugin and activate that plugin so basically now um, I do have a sitemap in here and and any of the plugins that you set up they'll be in the main plugins menu and also they're usually under settings here um, so if I refresh this page but yeah so basically I guess they put it somewhere else but yeah so now I have a sitemap and I just need to go submit that to Google Webmaster Tools I'm not going to do that right now but yeah if you have a question, raise your hand and I'll bring you the microphone. Okay, so continuing on here. Um, so yeah, so that's basically like the, the three things that I always do on every install. You want to make sure that you do those three things. Otherwise, you know, you might run into the situation where your, your, your URL structure isn't optimized. And it's a, real, it's a big pain to kind of fix that moving forward. Because um, if you do change the URL structure after the fact, um, all the inbound links, which are very, very, very critical to your site's um, ranking um, and, and a huge component of Google's um, algorithm, um, those links will break and won't count for your site anymore. So it can really hurt your uh, organic rankings. Um, the next step is really choosing a theme. So um, the, the basic uh, install, it comes with a, a default theme. You probably don't want to use that. It's very, very bland. Um, but there's there's literally millions of themes out there um, that are really, really great. Um, developers have made them, professional designers make them. Um, a lot of them are free, some of them cost money. Um, these are some of the uh, themes uh, that, that I use uh, or, or just sources to find themes. So Theme Forest um, is one, Elegant Themes, um, Chimera Themes, and there's a ton more, and these are all gonna be linked up. Um, I'll send out a link uh, later here. Um, uh, and then there's also theme frameworks that are pretty popular. Um, there's, a, there's like big communities built around these. So there's Thesis, Genesis, and Headway. Um, Headway is actually a drag and drop interface. So if you're not really familiar with um, cascading style sheets or any kind of graphical stuff, you might want to check out an, an option like that. But I'm going to go ahead and show you one example here. Um, and it's the one that I use actually on every single uh, setup that I do. And that is yeah, I, I have a question. Yeah. What is the difference between a theme and a framework? So a theme, um, they're both they're both themes, but the the like so thesis, it just has like a lot of basic settings. It's a little bit easier to work with. Um, but actually, the themes. Uh, so it's so to answer your question, it's just the theme out there that has kind of a community built around it. Um, but yeah, I mean, so the site that I use uh, to uh, set up websites is is basically theme forest and there are like hundreds and hundreds of professional like designs on here of and they're they're around like 35 bucks there's free themes too if you're looking to set up like a certain type of themes they're also categorized i would i would recommend like so if you're trying to set up like a photography site or something google photography wordpress theme or professional work uh, uh photo theme and basically it'll pull back a lot of options there some will be free some won't be but I mean, $35 is insanely cheap for a professionally designed website. So this is just one example um, where basically I could take this theme and put it into the, the back end of the site there and basically turn it on um, and switch that theme over. So you guys want to see a working example of how to kind of do that? Cool. So question over here too. All right. I have a feeling that you kind of skipped over the answer to the question about the difference between a theme and a framework. Could you please explain it a little more in depth? So yeah, so thesis is a popular um, theme out there. They're both themes, um, but it's basically a, the, the back end of thesis has a lot more options for you to kind of choose and do stuff a little bit easier. Um, and it's very popular because of that. Um, but yeah, that's, they're both themes is, is the answer to that question. Um, they're just, uh, yeah. Is, is a framework more configurable than a theme? It it just, yeah, it has more settings in the back end, so I'll show you. Um, most themes come with an admin panel, so I'll show you in this install right here. Um, so basically, the theme that I'm using uh, on this site, it's from Chimera Themes, but basically um, the theme options. This is basically, with every theme, there's usually theme options, if it's a premium theme or uh, the developer put a back end to it. 
Um, but basically you have a lot of options here where you can just basically, so on my home page, I want to show this page or, or what have you. Um, and Thesis has just a more robust back end um, to it. And that's, those are kind of the, yeah. Um, I was just going to try and add on to the answer just in terms of the framework versus the theme. Sure. We do some custom for custom framework development. It's more of like a development platform as opposed to just when you buy a theme on ThemeForest. It's, it is what it is. There's not really a lot of changes you can make to it. Right. A framework like from StudioPress or from these guys lets you, it's a whole development platform on the back end that the theme, just because it looks one way in the, in the image on the site, can be changed and customized Right, right. Huge, in a huge way, backend. as opposed to like yeah. a thirty-five dollar theme forest theme. Right, right. Uh, I mean, this I actually got this theme from Theme Forest. A lot of them actually do have backends to them now. Um, it's just kind of, uh, and it'll say if it has an admin panel. This is backtracking a little bit. I don't know if you have the time to do it, but um, could you talk about how to add the Google Analytics to the footer PHP? Yeah. So. Uh, I would I would just use a plugin to do that. Um, if you're not familiar with code, um, I would just uh, basically in your plugins here, just click Add New, and then search for Google Analytics, and basically just install that, and it's going to tell you to drop in the code there. So it's in the plugin. How do you do that? Um, I mean, in the settings of that plugin when you install it. So like when you install a plugin, it'll be underneath. So. Um, when you install, so these are all in pl plugins that I've installed on this site. Like, so when I click into it, that's in the back end here. So it'll actually show me the settings, and it'll basically have like a box here that you drop in the code. That's how you do the Google Analytics there. Um, but yeah, a plugin will help you do it way easier than putting it in the actual code. So do it that way if you're not familiar with code. Um, but yeah, so once you actually have the theme, it'll it'll you'll download it in a in a zip file. You can actually come into the settings here. So, under appearance, there's a couple options here, but it's under themes, and I'll show you here uh, the different themes that I have installed on the site. Um, so once you drop a theme in uh, to the back end or install it from here, so basically install themes, you would just install that zip file. Um, you know, browse your computer and upload that. And there's also uh, a library here uh, of themes in the back end. But basically, once you do that. You can preview it. It'll show up here. So these are the available themes I have. This is the current theme on my site. And these are two other ones. So this is the default that every WordPress install comes with. And this one is one that my site uh, used to look like. So if I just preview that, it'll show me what my site will look like with that particular theme on it. And uh, there's some configuration that you have to do once you set up the theme. But So this was what my old site used to look like um, here with some broken images because those aren't up anymore. But basically, my site, since I s just switched out the theme, uh, clicked activate on the new one, it actually looks like this. Oops. So this is a, you know, this was a theme that I got for $35, and it's, you know, a professionally designed website that I could have paid thousands of dollars for, but instead I just got it from ThemeForest, set it up, and then uh, on the back end, there's just a couple options to you know set it up. Yep. That was this theme is called App Press. Yeah. Um, and basically, all the themes that you do buy, they they usually come with documentation, and the developer will also answer questions on them. And and with Thesis and a couple other of the frameworks, there's just more documentation, more support with those. They do cost a little bit more though. I think Thesis is like ninety dollars or something. Yeah, so there's a question way back in the back there. But, um, yeah. So, moving on while she moves back there. So there's also some critical plugins that, that I use on every, yep, go ahead. Okay, so if you have a theme and you have multiple pages in your website or your WordPress document, whatever you want to call yep. it, can you have a different theme on different pages, or are you stuck with the same theme through multiple pages? You can, you can do that. Um, it does require some custom coding, though. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. There's also, you can also set up custom page types. So, like, a certain type of page, you can have a completely different layout. And then on the actual page, there's a drop-down menu um, that you can actually choose what type of page you want that to be. Um, yeah. Cool. 
So uh, a couple other um, things I just wanted to mention here, uh, some critical plugins that I put on every single uh, WordPress install that I do uh, set up. So the first one is uh, called Custom Widget Areas, and this allows you to set up a custom sidebar on a per page basis or per post basis. So basically, um, with your website, whether it's uh, a you know, personal website or a business website, especially if it's a business website, you wanna have you know, different calls to action, different offers, different you know, things on a different page to show that, that makes sense to that page. And by default, um, WordPress has like a, just one default sidebar that will show on every sidebar on your site. But this plugin will allow you to basically customize that on a per page, per post basis. Very, very handy to use. Um, the next one is called uh, the Yoast SEO plugin, and this will allow you to basically um, optimize the page title, meta description, and URL structure, and a bunch of other things uh, on your for, for the on-page SEO on your site. Um, very critical piece to um, basically optimizing your site, making sure it's tidy and easily um, kind of targeting those keywords you're going for. Um, the other one we already talked about, XML sitemaps. So the other, the other cool thing about WordPress is you don't really even need to know how to do uh, designing on the page. There's uh, short codes, which my buddy John here is doing a presentation on short codes, right? Yeah, tomorrow you should check that out. It's a short plug there. But basically with short codes, what you can do is insert um, custom styles um, very, very quickly and easily. So on, on my site here, so basically all this stuff here is, and I'll show you guys this page if I can find it real quick, but this is like some advanced CSS stuff that I, I really don't know how to do, but it, I made it with short codes. So I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, but basically that plugin will allow you to kind of add in custom short codes and what have you. So you don't need a designer to kind of do all this professional uh, design work. So let's see here. Oops, that's the wrong site. But yeah. So, any questions while I'm pulling this up? Question? Yep. Um, the You have uh, Yoast and the XML sitemap plugin? Yep. And Yoast does XML sitemaps? Is there a reason, is one, Yeah. is the other one just much better? So, the, the Yoast plugin, it does have that option, but it doesn't work. Um, at least it hasn't worked on a couple of the installs that I've I put it on, so basically you need both still. But it does have that option, it just doesn't work. That's why I have both. Yeah, good question though. Um, so let's see here. So, um, see, I'll show you this page right here. So basically the short codes on this page, uh, this, is, this is what a short code looks like and they're really easy to insert like uh, with the plugin basically it pops up this menu and you decide like what style you want on it. But this is the, basically the content on this page um, but this is actually what it looks like um, when you render it. it. It appends all that styling stuff to it. So basically added in these like custom uh, things here. This is generated from a short code as well. That, but that would be like you know some really hard like CSS stuff um, that I don't know how to do, and a lot of people don't know how to do it. But you can do it really easily with the short code. Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. So the short code is kind of it's like a macro, yeah, or a, yeah, a mini style sheet or something. For yep, that? exactly. Basically, uh, when it renders the page, it'll append all the stuff. Yeah, it happens all in the back end, and, and the the plugin takes care of that. And a lot of themes and frameworks actually come with short codes. Um, it's kind of a standard now for professional themes. Um, free themes usually don't have them. But uh, a couple other quick plugins here. So Dig Dig, this is a social media plugin that allows you to add social sharing uh, buttons to any page on your site. Definitely important, um, more and more so uh, social kind of sharing signals are factoring into Google's ranking algorithm. So kind of important there. Uh, SEO smart links, that uh, automatically links kind of internal pages. Um, you specify which keyword you want to uh, link to that page and you don't actually have to link it up. Um, and then also uh, the HubSpot plugin um, that was actually made by my buddy John here that allows you to add in um, calls to action to drive you know, more conversions on your site really quickly and easily, it, it adds in short codes as well. Very cool plugin uh, to use. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's kind of, uh, I, I want to open it up to questions now. These are kind of more advanced plugins and they'll be linked up in, in, in the back. But uh, yeah, any, any questions? Raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sorry, could you repeat the question? It was about the, this slide. But yeah, so it's really easy to set up a WordPress site and install the theme. It's basically uploading a zip file into the themes area of, of the actual um, admin. But it's really, so so when you're looking for a theme, there's a couple things that you want to remember. So so when you're looking uh, on ThemeForest or wherever you do uh, decide to kind of go and look for a theme, basically just think about the theme as the skeleton of your site. All of the uh, you know graphics, logos, colors, you can change that stuff. Um, sometimes it's in the back end. Uh, sometimes you might actually have to go into the style sheet and change it. But just think about that as kind of like the skeleton of your site, how it's going to be laid out. Um, but the logo and stuff like that is usually in the admin section um, where you can easily change that out. Yep. Are any of the themes more SEO friendly than others, or do you get that from the plugins? Um, so yeah, it's the, the SEO of, of the themes. Um, there's not one that's more so than the other. You just want to make sure. So like, just a brief SEO rundown. Like the page title on the page, uh, your heading one, and your meta description. You just want to make sure that you can edit those, and you can do that with the plugin um, and and on the theme on your site. So yeah, it's 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 kind of theme independent. Answer your question. Any other questions? Yeah. Tell, oh, sorry. When you um, purchase a professionally designed theme, will it um, indicate which um, browsers it's been certified for? So yeah. So uh, basically, a lot of these themes will actually say, um, you know, what they work with. Um, so basically, let's see here. Yeah. So so it says you know usually and this is this is actually so theme force is like a marketplace and there's there's thousands of awesome themes in there that's why I always reference it but basically it shows the compatibility um, and you could also you know do the preview uh, of all the like basically live preview of the site and put it in the browser see if it actually renders there's also like you know you want to look at the comments if there's tons of comments and like stuff is broken you know but most most of these themes are awesome um, I haven't really run into any problems with them. um. How many pages should you add on to a, a WordPress site? I mean, I have two WordPress blogs. And they each have a, a home page and a about page. And um, how many plugins should you have on a, a at least you should, a site? The, the more pages on your website that are targeting different keywords, the better. So the more pages, the better. Oh, really? Yes. Um, I didn't really know much about what WordPress was before I came here today, so I don't know if it's just for blogs or entire oh. websites or complicated websites. And I'm just wondering how well this WordPress can integrate with other sort of frameworks like ASP and that kind of thing. Or so right, right. So so WordPress is written on PHP, so uh, it's it's not going to play well. I mean, you can get those two languages to talk together, but basically with WordPress, it's not just a blogging platform. I mean, this is like my main business's site. Um, there is a blog on it, um, but you can have a forum on a WordPress site. You can have an entire e-commerce store. You can have a so there's there's actually a social uh, network uh, plugin theme that you can get called BuddyPress. So it's really robust in terms of what you can do with it. So grab, grab that mic real quick. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, when you choose WordPress, uh, this is just a question because I don't know anything about it, but um, that means you're choosing PHP and you're choosing a sort of Unix-based platform. Is that right? Or is some, some of your pages maybe can be in ASP or, or Cold no. Fusion, so say? Or how, how everything on the theme work is, is on, in PHP. So yeah. So basically, I mean, you can have other pages on your server that are different languages, but it's just not going to be in the WordPress backend. You can't really control that content from the WordPress backend, unless it's a PHP page. So this question goes just kind of the next step beyond, but I've looked at the, the, uh, the schedule, and I'm not sure where it would be covered, so let me ask it. Um, what is the difference between a post, a page, and an article? That's a good question. So <clears throat> there's actually... So in WordPress, I mean, the difference would be like post 
would be would show up in wherever your blog is, the blog section on your website. A page would be a page on your website, and an a article is just another word for a, a post. But um, in terms of like how every everything, it's just e e both of them are pages on your site. Both of them are new pages on your site. Google looks at them the exact same way, like a post and a page. It's the same thing. It's just another web page for them to index. <clears throat> but in in the back end of WordPress, that's the difference. So I I've had a uh, WordPress site for a couple of years. I, I've got a couple of sites, and it always confused me. I, I have an old site that I've never actually been able to convert because I'm not sure how to differentiate between the static pages and the live pages. So and I don't I don't maintain a blog per se, but I do publish articles on a on a on an irregular basis. So I want the articles I publish to be perhaps highlighted but I still want that static part of my blog to always be there um, so, so you, maybe if this isn't the venue in this room right now can you yeah. suggest where that might be addressed yeah I'm not that's the, a, the next talk is about converting yeah, old to sites off, to go by sites. answer that um, my theme has a child <laughs> do you know what that is <laughs> the theme has a child yeah child theme <laughs> And I don't know what that is. So is that a theme within a theme? Yeah, this guy knows. Yeah, it's like satellite. You yeah. Have to um, basically, the child theme pulls from the same style sheet and a lot of functionality from the parent theme. So if you want to start with the default theme that comes with WordPress 2010 or now 2011, you can use a lot of the functionality that it comes with and then modify it using your child theme which pulls from the, the 2011 style sheet and that functionality and maybe you only want to make a few small tweaks to the style sheet to change the header or the sidebar it won't affect the original theme and you can then reuse that child theme and create more child themes and so forth so it's basically the same thing as a same idea as a framework except we're using the parent theme kind of as the framework makes sense good answer any other questions there's some questions in the back i'll there. come back there Yeah, and I'll be I'll be here like all day today and all day tomorrow. So if you see me, just come up and you have a question about anything WordPress related, just let me know. I was just going to expand on the the child theme for the for the last question. Another advantage of having a child theme is that the main theme um, you you can upgrade the main theme and your child theme will 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 inherit the upgrade. So as WordPress develops, so for instance in WordPress 3.0 there are now custom page types. And if you had a theme that was done before then, it wouldn't have had custom post types. And so after you upgrade that theme, you can maintain your child theme, which will maintain your look and maintain all the functionality that you have, and will inherit the upgrades that go with the main theme. So it's, so it's really advantageous to use a parent theme from someone that, that is very reputable. And so as WordPress develops, they'll upgrade that main theme, and you can, you can continue to... Um, uh, improve your website as WordPress continues to develop. Thank you. I'm coming from a uh, public school system and we're looking at maybe using WordPress for our teacher class websites. Uh, I'm in favor of that. There are a lot of people who are interested in using Moodle. Uh, I'm not one of them. But as somebody who has uh, perhaps more experience with both platforms, can you give some ideas of what makes WordPress a superior content management system, particularly for websites, uh, compared to Moodle or other platforms? Moodle. Uh, so I'm not familiar with Moodle. Um, it sounds funny. But basically, with WordPress, I mean, there's an army of, basically, w when you choose to use WordPress, a self-hosted WordPress site, you're basically inheriting the development work of thousands and thousands of people out there and whatever whatever you know you would spend time developing yourself for a site like Moodle and have to do like a bunch of customizations it's probably already been done for WordPress and there's probably a plugin that's already been made um, it's really just googling whatever your problem is or whatever you're trying to do on your site and with the word plugin or WordPress plugin you're gonna find a lot of lot of resources out there so that would be the main advantage um, cost savings and yeah so I'm almost out of time but yeah Moodle's open source? Okay. So, I mean, they might have a big development community. I'm not my, familiar my with My company that. uses, we have to work with Moodle, um, and I would recommend trying to steer clear of that. It's kind of, 
it's yeah. it's okay at what it does, but if you're trying to get you know parent uh, sorry you know teachers and students using something, and you're the one that's going to have to manage the back end, you want to stay away from Moodle. It's it's very much more difficult than than WordPress. I mean, yeah, it's scary. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. that's the right decision. <laughs> I would definitely go with WordPress, or go to the Moodle conference. <laughs> Yeah. There's one in the back and the one in the middle. All right, I'm okay. I guess it's time for one more question. Just really quick, I don't know if I was late, so maybe you've already talked about this. The difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com in terms of themes. Right. So there's there are themes for WordPress.com, um, but again, like WordPress.com, your site will be like mysite.wordpress.com. So all of that stuff, all those pages, all the content that you're creating, all that SEO authority is going to WordPress.com, the main domain. So that's why you either want to mask it over, or you really want to go with the self-hosted WordPress site. On, so WordPress.org, and then install it on, on the server um, with Bluehost, one-click install. OK, uh, last question. That. Yeah, last question. Uh, I also work for a school district, and we're looking at possibly hosting multiple uh, WordPress sites on one installation. Is that a monumental task, or is that easy to pull off? So what you, you can um, install uh, multiple WordPress instances on the same domain. So that's exactly what I did here today. I installed like uh, a test, uh, it, just in a subdirectory of my site, another WordPress install. Yeah, cool. So yeah, so this presentation will be up, and all the links will be up. I'm going to put it up, socializercause.com, or .org slash WordPress. Um, it's not there now. I'm going to put it up there in a little bit. But yeah, if you just go there, um, you should be able to download this presentation and uh, get in contact with me if you have any other questions or what have you. But I appreciate your time and listening to my Moodle jokes. Thank you.